Shalom, and welcome back to the continuing series on the complete Aleph Tav. Last time we discovered that Aleph Tav means you in the feminine singular. Even though there are four different forms for you in the Hebrew language, there is only one Strong's number. We also talked about in the beginning there were only two beings. There was God in the garden and there was the man. Even if the man is male and female, we see that they are said to have one flesh. I want to cover the grammar a little bit more about the first, second, and third person. The first person is the self, the word I in English. It's ani in Hebrew. The second person and I've chosen the uh, feminine singular option here where we can see the Aleph Tav, At. The second person is the person uh, whom we are talking with, the person with whom we are in immediate relationship. The third person, uh, remember who is he and he is she, and there are also some plural forms. The third person is the other person, the person that we're talking about or a person that we're referring to. It's possible that we're in relationship with them, but we are not interacting with them at the moment. We are talking about them. They are a different person. They're an, uh, another person. There's me, and then there's me and you. We're together. We're in relationship. We're interacting. And then there's that other person, the other people that are over there. They are the third person. We could ask the question if there is a fourth person. And there are some grammars where they postulate a fourth person. Um, in some American Indian languages, we have this problem in English. For example, the sentence, Basil met John and gave him his hat. Well, who gave what to whom? Uh, whose hat was it? So that is not clear in English. And these other uh, languages do have a form that make it clear. However, they're not really a fourth person. They're still the person that we're talking about, the person that's over there. If you're interested in reading more about this, here's a website. You can read an article about it. There is also what is called the impersonal voice, which is used in Finnic languages, Finnish and Estonian. If I say, I have this friend, well, the person is unnamed. If I say, someone broke the window, well, clearly, the window is broken, we don't know who did it, or uh, we say in English all the time, they say that. These are some other people who are over there. They are still really the third person. They're not the person I'm interacting with. Uh, I being the first person, the person I'm interacting with is the second person. And so these are still really third persons. They're over there. Um, if you ever find out who the they is that say all these things, I would love to know. Please contact me. So going back to the Aleph Tav, we've, we've shown um, many different meanings and the whole idea that Yeshua is the Aleph Tav. We're going to say here that Aleph Tav, the Aleph is the first cause, whatever was before creation. You remember that the letter Aleph indicates the strength, the power, by uh, its pictographic image of the ox. So there it was something, and it set all of creation in motion. And the last thing that was created, the end of creation, is the human being. And that uh, will be represented by the Tav. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So the very last thing that was created was the human being. He is the end of creation. We also see that in the beginning, Yeshua 
was before all things as the Aleph. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And then we see that he also became the man. He became the final part of creation. John 1.14 And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Yeshua tabernacled with men, he took on flesh, and came to walk the earth with us as a human being. It is not the purpose of this presentation to, pursue, to prove that Yeshua is Yahweh. We're just going to bring a few examples. Psalm 23, 1, a psalm of David. Yahweh is my shepherd, I shall not want. In John 10, 14, Yeshua said of himself, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known of mine. Colossians 2, 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is the Aleph and the Tav. 1 John 4, 2 Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Yeshua the Messiah is come in the flesh is of God. There are many religions which will claim that, yes, Jesus was a flesh man who walked the earth, but they do not accept his divinity. Hebrews 1, 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, that is, the Father's Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, that is, Yeshua made the world, who being the brightness of his, a Father's glory, and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. If Yeshua is Aleph Tav and we are his body, there are certain things that we can expect. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We are becoming like Him through the work of the Spirit in our lives. We are becoming like the image of the Aleph Tav. 1 Corinthians 15.49 And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. I'm not trying to say that we are going to become God, as is taught in uh, some other religions, but clearly there is some spiritual change that takes place within us as a result of being the members of his body and as a result of the fact of the things that he himself, Yeshua, experienced as the Aleph Tav. Remember, the Aleph Tav means you. There is a coming restoration of all things. Acts 3.20 And he shall send Yeshua the Messiah, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The word which is translated restitution there is only ever used in a noun form this one time and it comes from a verb that actually means restoration and it's always translated as restoration in other places the verb apocothistimi um, strong's number 600 matthew 12:13 then saith he to the man stretch forth thine hand and he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. It came back to be the way it was when it was first made. Mark 8.25 
After that he put his hands again upon his eyes, and made him look up, and he was restored, and saw every man clearly. The man's eyes were returned to work the way they had been designed to work from the beginning. Matthew 17:11. And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall come first, and restore all things, bring things back to the way they were in the beginning. Part of this uh, includes a reconciliation, and we just need to say that there are things that uh, the deep mysteries of God that we cannot wrap our minds around right now. Zechariah 14.9 And Yahweh will be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Yahweh and his name one. When we say the Shema, this is our pledge of allegiance to the Father. We understand that Yahweh is one. And yet there is a day coming where there will be some kind of reconciliation of all the things that present themselves as Elohim, as Yeshua, as Yahweh throughout the scriptures, and those things will be resolved into one, and we will understand them in that time. John said, uh, Yeshua said in John 10:30, I and my Father are one. Yeshua and Yahweh are one. John 17:11, He prayed for us, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. We are going to be reconciled to each other in a way that perhaps we don't understand now. In addition to being his body, we are his bride, and this is very crucial to understand that Aleph Tav, that means you, is a feminine singular Aleph Tav. In Hosea 2.16, And it shall be in that day, saith Yahweh, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Baali. I have been told, and for everyone who speaks another language that I have ever asked, that Hebrew is the only language where the word for man and the word for woman are a masculine and feminine of the same word. I know in English it sounds actually like woman is related to the word man, but uh, it is from a Scandinavian idea of being no man. In other words, there's a man and then there's thing that's not the man. That's the woe man, the no man. Uh, so it doesn't really match up in English um, in other languages. The words are completely different, but in Hebrew, the ish and the isha are the masculine and the feminine. So when the woman calls the man ishi, she's actually talking about something that is part of herself, the way that it was designed to be in the beginning, that the man and woman would be as uh, basar echad, one flesh. Ba'ali means my lord. And we're going to see that we know about the Baal, Baalim, the Baals, that they are the names of false gods. But even to this day in modern Hebrew, in Israel, the women refer to their husbands as Baali, my Lord. It is a matter of respect, but it denotes a very different relationship than Ishi. Continuing in verse 17. For I will take away the names of the Baalim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. If there is a betrothal, there is going to be a wedding. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know Yahweh. There will be an intimate relationship again between the bride, the Aleph Tav, who is you, the bride, and Yahweh. Second Corinthians 11.2, Paul wrote, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you. I have given you in marriage to one husband, 
that I may present you as a chaste virgin, that is the called out assembly, to Messiah Yeshua. Another picture of this marriage is picked in uh, Ephesians 5, beginning in verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Messiah is the head of the assembly, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the assembly is subject unto Messiah, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Messiah also loved the assembly and gave himself for it, that it might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the that he might present it to himself a glorious assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. For he that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the assembly. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Messiah and the assembly. So to my mind, this is probably the most important understanding of the Aleph Tav. You, you are a feminine side of a relationship which will be restored in the end, in that day, to the masculine side of Yahweh Yeshua God, however that presents itself in that day. The third person who is not willing to come into the assembly will be done away with forever. Revelation 21.3 and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, they are the ones that will enter in. So it is my opinion that in the end, in the restoration of all things, there will only be that Aleph Tav relationship, the first and the last. There will be no third person relationship in the future because there will be no third person. There will only be the father, the husband, and his bride, the female Aleph Tav, who is being made into one assembly. Even though this is probably the most important part of the Aleph Tav, there are still a few more things that um, I would like to bring to you. So until next time, Tasimata Inayim Al Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.